Paul is with us in Jackson, Mississippi. Hey, Paul, how are you? Doing all right, man. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I've I've come into a, a, a predicament here that um, a lot of people don't don't get the chance to do. Um, here in about four months, I'm going to be receiving a check for about one point two million dollars. Wow! Um, How that? Where would that come yeah. from? <laughs> um, a, a a land deal. Okay, so you you had a piece of land that you sold, and it's gonna you're gonna net you one point two million. Well, actually, it, it's sort of like a finder's fee. I found some land, took it to a developer. Um, it was worth a lot of money, um, and he's going to turn it around. So that's going to be my percentage of the profit. Wow. Very nice. Okay. I hate it when that happens. Good job. <laughs> if you find any more, let me know. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. How can we help? But Yeah, um, I'm I'm 27. Mm -hmm. um, I have about fifty thousand dollars in debt, mm -hmm. um, and taking in this kind of money, it, it's great, but it's also kind of scary because I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot of wisdom. Um, it's why it's wise <laughs> to be scared. If you were uh, strutting around acting like you knew what to do and you'd never done it before, that would be the the first sign you were going to lose the money. So, um, really good, really good position to take. Uh, healthy kind of fear, not not toxic fear, not being anxiety ridden or something, but uh, just going, ah, oh, this scares me a little bit. Like, this is a really powerful car, and I'm not that great a driver yet. Right. Yeah. Cool. So should, should I, should I, I don't own a home mm -hmm. right now. Um, I'm renting. Mm -hmm. should, should I, should I take, um, I don't know, 200000 and put it down on a house? Mm -hmm. or should i mean should I, should I reinvest this money mm -hmm. or you know and i have a i have a day job as well all this side income that i have is is working from 4 30 to 10 o'clock at night and on saturdays and sundays wow um, not a I've bad side been, hustle <laughs> yes i know I've, I've always been really driven um and i'm so just, what do you I, make I, a I, year I, on your day job Seventy thousand. okay and you're used to living on that Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Well, you can do a lot of different things, Paul. Um, I'll give you a couple of things that, uh, first, let me throw some just basic ideas at you, and then I'll throw some conceptual ideas at you as well, okay? Basic idea is um, ride check, pay off the debt, okay? Okay. You, you said you had 50000 in debt, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you ride a check and you pay off the debt. That's thing one. <clears throat> Thing two is you need to sit down with a, ta a good tax pro and calculate what the taxes are going to be on this and then just set that aside and pretend like it's not yours because it's not yours. Mm -hmm. You're going to get in a pinch if you start screwing around with a portion of this that is taxes. So just set aside an account over there and be ready for next April when it rolls around uh, and hold on the money okay. as long as you can hold on to it, but just put it in a money market account and pretend like you don't own it anymore. And that's going to be okay. a substantial amount of money. I figured it would be around 250. Yeah, I think probably Maybe 300. 300. I think it's, it's probably 300. Yeah, but sit down okay. with your tax pro and calculate it exactly and set that aside. Okay. And then that tells you what you got to work with. Okay. So let's call it 300 and then let's uh, call the other 50 and that gets us down to 850. Okay. Correct. Um, and uh, what would you, if you were going to buy a home, do you want a house? You know, not necessarily, um, not not in the market that it is right now. Um, I don't want to pay, you know, I don't want to pay three hundred thousand dollars for a house that's worth one hundred seventy. Uh, honey, it's worth three hundred. Uh -huh. It's not worth one seventy five. Okay. It's not coming back down. Okay. The real estate prices have retreated in the history of the United States. Never. Okay. Long term. Well, that makes me a little bit more comfortable. I mean, we had one retreat in the 30s, and it came back up. We had another retreat in the 08, and it came back up. And those are the only two times it ever went backwards, and it came back up. Uh, and so okay. we're not, we're not going to see a retreat in a, as a result of this mess we're in right now. But we are going to see a slowing in growth. So, But you're a single 27-year-old mm -hmm. guy. You may not want to screw with the house. You may want to get you a nice condo where you don't have to mess with mm -hmm. stuff, right? I don't know what you're living situation is but i would go pay cash for a residence okay whatever that is and so let's call that 300 that still leaves you 550 laying around what are you driving mm -hmm. what are you driving um i've got a uh 
2018 F-250. Okay. Okay. That's, that's where all my debt is. Okay. I was going to oh, say. Oh, that's, that's sounds... the truck. Okay. So you're paying off the truck, keep the truck. It's a great car. Keep it. Okay. What's your I love suggestion? It. Well, beyond that, I mean, you can always park extra money in a high-yield savings account and use it towards your next goal. So I love the idea of getting a reasonable residence. Let's pay off all the debt. Let's put, let's get our emergency fund in place. So set aside maybe, you know, 20, 30K over here for that. And beyond that, look at what your next goals are. Maybe you want to do real estate investing and you want to pay cash for that. Maybe you want to go on some vacations. Uh, maybe you want to set it aside because you don't know what's going to happen in the next five years. Maybe you, you meet someone, you get married. And so I like the idea of parking a lot of this aside once we have our house paid for. <clears throat> yeah, nothing okay. wrong with that at all. Here's the thing. If you want to deal with the fear, like sometimes I talk to someone that's inherited $2 million or something, and they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know anything about money. And so, uh, you know, you th we put them through Financial Peace University immediately, which we're going to do for you. Okay, I'm going to pay for you to go through it. I want you to get the basics on handling money down. And then you kind of build yourself a little board of directors for this million-dollar business. And the board of directors is a good insurance agent, a good estate planning attorney that helps you get a will in place, a good tax mm -hmm. tax professional in your corner. Uh, it sounds like you already know a lot about real estate, uh, but you may, you know, if you want to put a real estate person in your corner, that's fine. But you put some experts around you that will teach you different things that you need to know uh, to be able to do things that you don't know how to do. Um, my, for instance, my estate plan is very complicated. Um, there's no possible way I could have invented with my knowledge base, my estate plan. So I have paid an estate planning lawyer a lot of money to keep my mm -hmm. family from having to pay tens of millions of dollars in taxes after I die. Cause they tax you twice in the U S now. Cause if you're rich, you are, okay. must be evil and you should be punished. So, um, <laughs> But the, uh, you know, that's an example. I don't do my own taxes. Uh, and I, I could probably muddle through, but I probably miss some stuff. I don't pull my own teeth either. So, um, you know, that, that's the thing you're dealing with. So, you know, you kind of get some advisors around you so that you've got, and you don't have to pay them anything. They're just there and you develop a relationship and get maybe a good, maybe meet with one of the smart investor pros about investing in mutual funds. I, you may want to take that half million and you may be a real estate guy that wants to do some deals and just do them all with cash. And you can't mess them up if you're doing them with cash. Uh, because there's, I've never seen a single piece of real estate in my life go to zero. Uh, and you know, it's not, it doesn't, it's not Bitcoin. I mean, it can't go to zero. So, uh, you know, if you want to buy a piece of land and you want to fool with it, flip it over, you want to buy a property and flip it, uh, or you want to buy some properties that create income. That's all. Okay. Uh, good news about Jackson, Mississippi. It is a reasonable real estate market, uh, much more so than a lot of areas of the country. So, um, a lot of stuff you can do there. You, you got a lot of options. Congratulations, sir. It's amazing. Very proud I of him. I want this to set him up for the future. I mean, he's 27. Yeah. And if he manages this money well, he's going to be able to retire early, do whatever he wants to do. Well, I mean, if you invest a half million job. dollars and you made 10% off, that's 50000 a year. That's not bad. You know, and you got taxes on that and other stuff. And it won't be 10% a year every year, but you can make 10% average. But he can time. about replace his income if he yeah, invests this. get real close. And if you left it alone, you know, it'll double every seven years. So in seven years, he's 27. When he's 34, he'd have, you know, he'd have a million. And uh, so when he's 41, he'd have two million. Wow. And just, just off of that. That's so incredible. That's, you know, that's something to think about. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that, but again, that's investing it in mutual funds, leaving it alone. But if you're going to fool with real estate, you can probably make more than that, but you got more hassle and expertise involved. 